How you doing everyone and welcome to d Dreadnought, Gundam and more on PS4. And this is the MS-07B3 Guff Custom. And this has to be one of the most popular villain mechs in the Universal Century timeline for Gundam. This is the Xeonic Corporation's mobile suit Model 7 B variant and the third type of B variant made for the MS-07 GUF. The GUF is a very interesting machine. During the war, of course, the Xeonic company made the Zaku-1, which was the first combat-ready mass-produced mobile suit and was used to great effect as a garrison unit and in the early skirmishes just before and just at the beginning of the One Year War, but it was quickly surpassed with its successor, the MS-06 Zaku. Now, the Zaku is a fine machine, and a lot of Xeon fans out there will tell you so, that it is much better than the gym and could hold its own against much superior machines and was quite versatile, but it, in the end, it was made for space. Now, the Xeon did have a string of early victories that cost them a lot of resources and pilots, but put the Federation on the back foot in the early months of the One Year War, and they decided that the only way to keep the Federation down and to get all of its objectives completed and get a solid defense and good footing in the war was to invade Earth. So the Xeon invaded Earth and they brought all their Zaku-2s and a bunch of Zaku-1s and they quickly found out that even though the Zaku-2 was a very versatile machine and at the beginning of the war was a very fearful machine as the Federation soldiers and the mass population were not used to giant 50 to 60 foot robots stomping around and blowing everything up and creating so much carnage and destruction it was soon realized that it did have some limitations and the Zaku-2 was made for an environment like space in which it had a lot of room to maneuver and use its weaponry and fly in between ships and do a lot of critical damage as an overgrown, highly maneuverable, very armored and well-armed strike craft. The problem being when you put that strike craft on Earth, it can no longer use its thrusters and maneuverability to the same effect as it could in space. And so it could be funneled or put into choke points or it could be attacked via guerrilla tactics, it could be sabotaged, it could be hit with IEDs, and it became very apparent that as soon as the Federation started deploying their own forces, especially their new mass production mobile suits, that the close quarter combat that was seen on Earth needed a more rugged design, one that was made for close quarters combat, and one that had the power maneuverability and thruster rating that could defeat Earth's gravitational pull and make the machine much more maneuverable and versatile. And so, while the Zimmon company, which made the Zuda and did not get the contract for Xeon, the Xeonic company thought that it should make a terrestrial close combat version of the Zaku, and it made the MS-07 Guf. And you can really think of the GUF as the Zaku-3 Earth type if you want. I like to think of it that way because it brings nothing new to the table. It just adds more armor, more power, more thrust, and a whole range of interesting weapons made for close combat. And it was a very frightening machine. When you look at the GUF, I would say that is the embodiment of Xeon itself with its shoulder pads and spikes and horns and its very angry looking visor that made the Cyclopean sensor on the GUF and Zaku's head look even more menacing with that mono eye on the GUF. It made it look like a giant angry barbarian Cyclops and in many ways that's exactly what it was. Now, the GUF was first produced and given to the Xeon's best pilots, and since it was a limited production run and they just couldn't field enough of them, they gave it to their very best, and many of those pilots were able to customize this mobile suit, and that's where you see a lot of these popular custom designs come out. Now, 
A, a word about customization in Gundam, there are things like the Jim Kai, of course, which you've seen on the channel, and the Zaku Kai, and even though Kai loosely translates to custom from Japanese into English, the proper use of the word Kai is really uh, customizable. And you see that these Kai models are just better, more streamlined versions of the original mobile suit that have access to any sort of weaponry that previous lines of mobile suit in that class had, which gives a lot of tactical flexibility, but it's not really tactical flexibility for the pilot, it's really tactical flexibility for the commander or for the officer in charge of supply and weaponry, which means that these mobile suits were compatible with many weapon systems and that they could be outfitted for specific missions. But when we say custom in the Gundam universe, in the Universal Century Gundam timeline, whenever you see a mobile suit that says its designation, name, and then the word custom, you are talking about a specifically customized ACE unit. And you will see that there are things like the Zaku High Mobility Type Custom, which were given to Xeon Legends, such as Johnny Raiden and Shin Matsunada. You will see other customs, especially from Shar Aznable, the Red Comet. And you will also see custom variants that are given to Federation pilots, most notably the Gem Custom, which was a mobile suit given to the One Year War veteran South Burning, one of my most favorite old-type characters in the Gundam universe. I really love that character. So anyway, on to the Goof Custom. The original Goof was meant to be a close combat unit, more armor, more thrusters, more engine output, higher tensile strength in the legs and the arm, and better suited for the terrestrial environment. It was given access to just about everything the Zaku could use in its right hand, but replaced in its, instead of a left manipulator hand, had a four-barreled 35 millimeter machine gun for taking out light vehicles, infantry, light tanks, and the such, and it had a heat rod, which was a tentacle that could go out and not only grapple with enemies, but possibly disable them with an electrocuting EMP static charge. The Goof Custom improved upon this and was made even more versatile, and you could just mix and match the weaponry on this beautiful mobile suit. You could add a three barrel 35 millimeter uh, cannon and you could include that with the original four barreled one for seven barrels of complete mayhem. That's, that's the equivalent of seven A-10 warthogs flying down on you and just ruining your world. Or pilots could replace those four fingered machine guns with a hand manipulator so they could use double handed weapons or they could use a bazooka machine gun or a long-range 105 millimeter sniper rifle to supplement their weaponry as well as shields, various hand weapons, and the heat rod could be replaced with the heat wire, which was a very versatile grappling hook that could still electrocute and disable other vehicles and mobile suits. And this machine was just a beast in close combat. The one we're looking at here is from Gundam Side Story. 0079 Mobile Suit Gundam 8th MS Team. And what's a side story? We'll get into this in further episodes, but really quick. In the way that Star Wars has its trilogy movies, but then it has offshoot cartoons and offshoot movies like The Mandalorian, The Clone Wars, Rogue One, Gundam is such a massive and huge universe that is so expansive and has so much lore that there are several, several side stories that have nothing to do with the main characters or the main Gundam unit, but instead focus on all these other soldiers and lives that are involved in the background in these various battles or missions or timelines in the Universal Century Gundam universe, which is just really awesome. And 8th MS Team has to be one of the, if not the, fan favorites for one of the Gundam side stories, and that includes the side stories that are from video games, such as the 0079 side story Zionic Front, 0080 War in the Pocket, 0083 Operation Stardust Memory, or 
0080 Battlefield record. These are all great side stories, and in many ways, many fans think that these side stories are even better than the original Gundam cartoon or timeline, which is just great. Now, back to the MS07B3 Goof Custom. The, this particular Goof Custom was piloted by one of the antagonists in Mobile Suit Gundam 8th MS team and was probably the main rival for the main protagonist of the series, Shiro Amada, with his specially designed custom ground variant Gundam, the Easy 8 Ground Gundam. This thing was quite amazing and Norris Packard actually went through a series of mobile suits before he was awarded his GUF, and the GUF custom he was awarded was an upgraded version of the GUF that was actually derived from the GUF flight type. The flight type is now available in the game. I don't have it yet, but I might have it soon, and it's another fan favorite. The original GUF was deployed against the Gundam, and it was discovered that the Gundam was just better because it was being piloted by a psychic superhuman and was also just more equipped for the terrestrial environment with its super awesome Gundarium or Luna Titanium armor. However, the Goof was still a very dangerous mobile suit and was awarded to some of the most famous aces of the war, such as the legendary Ramba Rao from Dozel Zabi's First Space Assault Corps, and of course, Lieutenant Lou Rohr of Cassilia Zabi Special Forces Midnight Fenrir Corps, and of course, Norris Packard of Garma Zabi's Earthbound Southeast Asia Corps. Now, Norris Packard decided to take his custom guff and give it a 75 millimeter rotary giant Gatling cannon, which was outfitted to a shield and concealed a three barreled 35 millimeter machine gun underneath the shield, which concealed a three barrel 75 millimeter cannon beneath the shield and retained the heat wire grappling hook and disabling device along with his new heat saber mark ii which made this mobile suit incredibly maneuverable and dangerous in close combat he could have chosen to use the zaku machine gun or zaku bazooka in the right arm but like to keep that arm free for grabbing terrain buildings or for using his sword as he liked to close in to close combat now there was the Goof flight type, and the Goof flight type was meant to take this barbaric, armored, cyclopean, nightmare monster of a mobile suit and give it the power to fly. However, they did not have enough parts to make a full production run of the experimental Goof flight type and decided to use the better generator and better power to upgrade the Goof into the Goof custom, and one was awarded to Norris Packard. To give you an idea, without watching the show, and this doesn't spoil anything as far as plot goes, Norris Packard was being cornered by an overwhelming amount of Federation forces with something in the realm of dozens of space fighters and dozens of mobile suits cornering him in a volcanic mountain in Southeast Asia. And just on a small sortie to scout the enemy forces, Norris Packard shot down an aircraft, and when the aircraft's wingman tried to attack him, he grappled on to the wingman and was able to slingshot himself using boosters and the momentum from this crashing aircraft to propel himself high enough to survey the local area and spot three Federation heavy gun tanks that could possibly take out his spaceship and base, and when they fired on him, he used his heat wire grappling hook to throw the enemy aircraft that he was connected to into the incoming shots so that he caused Federation gun tank pilots to shoot down one of their own aircraft pilots and then safely landed and escaped into the volcano. This was an amazing ace with amazing skills, and he had an amazing mobile suit. In game terms, this is, of course, a Xeon mobile suit, and I did want to show another Xeon mobile suit before I got to any more Federation mobile suits. 
and this mobile suit is a raid mobile suit which means it has a little less armor and protection but is much faster has more thrust and has an advantage a damage advantage when attacking slower moving support mobile suits or mobile armor does more damage and it's easy to dodge with this mobile suit it's quite nimble and unlike a lot of raid mobile suits it does have a shield and it has a very good secondary weapon which is the three barreled cannon so when you're running around in the norris packard custom shooting everyone to bits with your assault cannon you have a backup weapon that still delivers almost as much damage as a normal mobile suit machine gun as well as having a tertiary weapon that can stun other mobile suits and blind them that being the heat wire grappling hook although you can't use the grappling hook to any terrestrial effect on ground maps you can't use it to climb that's a shame but i think that would be too much for the coders of this game to bear and just too much as far as balance and rage issues but this mobile suit is quite fast and quite fun to play and as a personal note this mobile suit is also a favorite of my best friend and cousin who simply loves this mobile suit so much and i'm glad i can showcase it on the channel of course you may have noticed if you are a xeon fan that uh, I, because I am now a corporal and I can color my own mobile suits, I do like to color them blue and white with red markings and details. And of course, I couldn't help but to color all my Xeon mobile suits in captured Federation colors. And this is no different. If you notice, it is Federation blue instead of Xeon blue, and it does have Earth Federation Space Forces decals and markings on it so it is of course a captured goof but the goof custom is a fun and amazing machine and it's just as good as it is in the anime the goof custom has been in gundam crossfire and gundam zeonic front but it just didn't capture the mobility the action the aggressiveness and the firepower that norris packard used this machine with in 0079 Mobile Suit Gundam FMS Team. This thing is finally captured properly and you can use it to great effect and use it just like Norris Packard did in the anime and I think that's just great. It really captures the essence of the Goof Custom. Now, many other pilots did have the Goof Custom, this particular model. It may have had a different weapon loadout or different bits or colors but it still had that goof flight type generator the stronger leg actuators the more armor the shield the better sensors and it was just a fine machine and you do see this in limited quantities throughout the earth conflicts of the one year war before Xeon was forced to retreat and in the case of lieutenant Lou Rower he from the Midnight Fenrir Corps which is the side story of the PS2 game Xeonic Front, which was a great game, by the way. Mo most of the Gundam fans of the channel will probably know that game from PS2. Lieutenant Lou Rower had a goof custom, and instead of using the Gatling Cannon, liked to use the shield, the heat wire, and a 105mm sniper rifle and liked to take out enemies at long range and when they closed in on him he had a surprise for them and would stun them and take them out with his heat saber so there's many many variants to the goof custom it's just that this particular goof custom is a fan favorite and probably the most well known and most popular in the gundam universe being the ms 7 b3 Norris Packard Custom. So it's quite a wonderful machine and it's a lot of fun to fight with and it's the first raid mobile suit from Gundam Battle Operation 2 that I'm featuring on the channel. But there will be many more and if you are at all a Xeon fan, I know you're gonna like it. Well, that's it from me for now and I'll see you soon.